evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to you all to our Harborough Anglican team carol service via Zoom. It's a delight and joy to see you all this evening, albeit on computer screens, but at least with unmasked faces. I'm very aware as we gather what a challenging time this has been for many through isolation, loneliness, loss and difficulty. But we pray God will draw close to each of us tonight, bringing his comfort and his joy. I'm sure a few more people will log in over these next few minutes before we uh, begin. But just to say we are recording the service again tonight. So if you'd like to avoid inadvertently being on the final recording for whatever reason, if you'd like to turn your video off now, that will be an extra precaution taken. And so we're going to listen to a little bit more instrumental music. And then at 6 p.m., we're going to start with our first carol, Once in Royal David City. Please stay on mute and sing heartily from the second verse onwards. Mm -hmm.
we gather to worship you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, that you knew tears and smiles like us. Thank you that you feel for us in our sadness and you share our gladness. Draw close to each of us, we pray, as we celebrate the words of the prophet Isaiah. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Hope arrives, unexpected, not neatly packaged, small, insignificant, hardly visible, almost unrecognisable. Hope arrives, easy to miss, hard to grasp, elusive almost, and yet very present, very close, next door, no, closer. Hope arrives up close, up close and personal. Dawn breaks, the baby awakes, hope, hope has come, come. Up, up close and personal. So good evening to you all and a very warm welcome to our Harbour Anglican team Christmas carol service on Zoom. It's wonderful to see so many of us gathered here this evening and a special welcome to anyone who's engaging with this through our website at another time. Whether you're gathered in a Christmas bubble with friends or family or on your own, and especially if plans have once again changed for you, as we once again immerse ourselves in God's wondrous story of God coming among us. My name's Alison Eilif, and together with um, my colleague, James Pickersgill, and a myriad of other contributors this evening, we will lead you through our service as we hear, see, sing, and wonder once again at Jesus being born into our world. Hope coming up close, up close and personal to each one of us. And hope is what we need right now because we are going through a difficult year, a time that none of us asked for, a time that has shaken us and continues to shake us, a time that has kept us apart, but also brought us closer together. In light of this, and perhaps despite this, we are here today to celebrate, to acknowledge that hope has come. So on this, in this service, we're going to go on a journey of hope, reflecting on the Christmas story through the eyes of Mary, Joseph, the shepherds and the Magi, and looking at how that hope is becoming tangible around the world today through stories brought to us by the Church Mission Society. And a thank you to John Ball, who links in with the Church Mission Society and pointed us towards some of these resources that we're using this evening. Jesus, whose birth we celebrate at Christmas, is the one referred to as Emmanuel, which is Hebrew for God is with us. Jesus is here bringing hope up close, defying social distancing rules, and inviting us to imagine what it means to have his hope arrive on our doorstep. We have a, a constant refrain this evening, and it's our true belief as Christians. That is that hope has come up close and personal for each of us. So please do join in whenever you hear the following music and words this evening. Dawn breaks. 
baby awakes. Hope, Hope has come, come up close and, and personal. personal. We light this candle for all God bearers, saying yes to God's challenge, accepting the pain and joy of an unknown future. God, we wait for your promise in life. close for Mary. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leapt within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, and then went back to her home house. Dawn breaks. The baby awakes. Hope has come, up close and personal. A 
poem called Hope for the World. Confused and shocked, my soul magnifies the Lord. Up close, my spirit rejoices. This close, in God my Saviour. Didn't see this coming, highly favoured. Savouring the sound, call me blessed. Severely ostracised from this day forward. Reality hits, give birth to a son. With a child at 15, but how? Shame on the family, he will be called. Dad not impressed, mum might not let it rest, son of the most high. And Joseph, will he believe me? Expose me? Leave me? The Almighty has done great things for me. Can't do this on my own, must get away. Be with the one, the other one's carrying promise. Pregnant, can barely believe. He looked through favour, except for the life, the joy, the hope growing. Holy is his name inside of me. Hope for the world that he has come. My future family has remembered his promise. God with us. Mercy from generation to generation. Hope for the world. Hope bigger than my own. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph, 
But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born and Jesus, Joseph named him Jesus. Dawn breaks, the baby awakes, hope, hope has come, come up close and personal. Joseph's story. I was dreaming. Do you take notice of your dreams? Not the mad ones, of course, but the ones that seem to have weight and texture and strength, like wood. You can build things with dreams. I was dreaming of our life together, of the house I would soon be building for us. What it would be like to share rooms, meals together, our bed, children laughing. It was good, a good dream. All seemed quiet and well. How soon and how fast everything falls apart. One sentence, a few words from her mouth. Joseph, I'm pregnant. The breaking of dreams in a moment, cold fear, anger, nausea. For days I couldn't steady my hands to work the wood. But the wood remained steady under my shaking hands, like my love for Mary. I couldn't understand her explanation, but I knew that I would always love her. Whatever needed doing needed to be done quietly. Yes, a quiet letting go. Good luck with that in this place. For days I was deep in a pit, thinking of our life apart, imagining Mary hidden, afraid, her sadness, her child, unknowing. Sleep was difficult to find, but in God's grace it seemed to find me. And one night it carried a dream. I hesitate to speak of this, but I will share it with you. Something, someone, so strong, so calm. Do not be afraid. Take Mary as your wife. The child is from God's Holy Spirit. He will work with wood to bring salvation. Now the child is as skilled in my workshop as any apprentice, has an eye for the grain, a sense for the balancing of a beam, of the load it can bear. He handles the wood with love, as he does everyone he meets, 
so strong, so calm. It's as if, it's as if God is with us. Do you take notice of your dreams? Not the mad ones, of course, but the ones that seem to have weight and texture, strength, like wood. You can build things with dreams. <laughs> For the shepherds. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognise him 
by this sign, you will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory, Glory to, to God, God in, in the highest heaven, heaven, and, and peace, peace on, on earth, earth to those with whom God, God is pleased. Is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. Dawn breaks, the baby awakes, hope, hope has, has come, come. Up, up close and personal. You can argue all you like about how reliable a witness I am, how far up or down the social scale you put me, whether I deserve anyone's respect. I know what I saw, though I admit I doubt myself, if I had ever been able to shake off the memory of how it felt. My friends and I saw a story unfold that night, a story that stretched as far back and forward as the bare night sky we slept under. Oh yes, the shepherds can do poetry. Have you forgotten that's how golden boy King David started out in these very fields, I like to think? Admittedly, some look down on us. It is, I grant you, smelly work and socially distant out here in the fields, but at least we look after our flocks, not like our leaders. We love to put the world to rights, sitting around on cold nights, reciting the old poems, the words of the old prophets give as much heat as our campfire. We smile at the way they call King shepherds, eh, called King shepherds, a thin code as they roasted them with the word of the Lord. You eat the curds, Clothe yourselves with the wool and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. So that night, when God's words came crashing down on us, we were, well, let's go with surprise, shall we? That shining presence all around, the announcement, history had been remade tonight and just down the road the anointed is here here is your king and he is one of you words too big to be real but so gently spoken they reached in and undid our fear and then so many voices it was like an army but their marching song sang of glory in heaven and peace on earth and though you listened you couldn't make out where one ended and the other began Words too big to be real, but they rang so true. Then, when we found the baby, oh, I do love a baby, a shiver went down my spine. Such a beautiful, fragile thing, wrapped up in swaddling, like the lambs we take to the temple for our sacrifice. I couldn't help wonder how long this little one would last in this cold world. Was this really another golden boy like David, a new shepherd king? someone actually worth our allegiance. I'd doubt the story myself if I couldn't right now feel the same shiver down my spine that I felt then, with the angel song ringing in my ears and the words of the old prophet rising up within me. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. I will make a covenant of peace with them. They will live in safety and no one will make them afraid. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight on.
arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said. But this is what the prophets wrote. And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them that the time when the star first appeared, then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them 
in a dream, not to return to Herod. Dawn breaks, the baby awakes, hope, hope has come, come. Up, up close and, and personal. personal. Poem, Men and Power, by Cathy Ross. These were important men. Astronomers, stargazers, revered in Babylon for their wisdom, knowledge, power. Strange events in the heavens presaged a new king. Discomforted, they travelled to see another powerful man. This man was troubled. Could his power be usurped? Secretly, he ordered the strangers to seek out this pretender. The three important men followed the star. They found the woman. They found the baby. Then they knew. These important men, they knew. These scientists from Babylon, they knew that he is the one. This baby boy is the one to unmask all powers, the one to heal all wounds, the one to give us hope. Comforted, these important men returned home a different way, their gifts offered, their lives changed. Star of wonder, star of night, star
the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. We light this light in memory. For the people we have lost. For goodbyes that went unsaid. The celebrations that never happened. For jobs that came to an end. The times we felt alone. For the silence and the waiting. For the loss of things hoped for. For the days that never came. We light this light in thankfulness. For those in every occupation who risk their lives for others. For friends and neighbours and the kindness of strangers. For the things we tried out. For signs of hope in unexpected places. For rediscovering our need of one another. For encountering beauty on our doorsteps. For creation space to breathe. For the faith and hope that sustained us in the darkest places. We light this light for the kingdom coming. We hold our flickering light before the pain and suffering of our world. Longing for the yoke of injustice to be lifted. For the rod of oppression to be broken. For bloodshed and conflict to cease. For the reign of justice and righteousness. For the coming of the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We light these lights. For the source of all light. For the light of the world. For the one who fills us with light and life and hope. For Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We continue now in prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Do join in with the words which will appear and the actions as Janet leads us.
Came flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. We've heard the story that reminds us of how God has come in ways surprising for a king, in ways that inspire hope in us today. And we now turn to see what Jesus coming up close and personal can look like practically today. For modern day Mary, perhaps, or a Joseph. We're going to look at three brief stories brought to us by CMS, the people in mission from around the world. Recife and Alinda, Brazil's northeast coast, famous for sun, sun and samba, also famous for a social inequality. A place where children are vulnerable to gang violence, exploitation and sexual abuse, many at the hands of their own families. Revive provides homes for these children where they have hope for a life free from these horrors. Children like Joycey and Anna, who spent four years at Revive before being reintegrated into their family. They're now back at Revive as new staff members for the new home. Revive Vision is based in Psalm 68, verse 6. God place the lonely in family, not care homes. Brazil doesn't currently have a culture of fostering and also Revive are working to set up by working with both the local church and government. In August, a catastrophic explosion devastated the city of Beirut. It left 70,000 homes destroyed and 300,000 people homeless. It was the third largest explosion in an urban setting since Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Hello, I am Nabil Shahadi, CMS mission partner based in Beirut, coordinating the Alpha Course in the Levant region. I attend Resurrection Church, Beirut, RCB. RCB's response to the explosion was to send relief teams to be with those whose lives had been turned upside down. The team members were Jesus' hands and feet in one of the hardest hit neighborhoods. They provided food and water, cleared up debris from the explosion, and renovated houses. They were asked by many, why are you doing this? 
they were able to share with them the hope they have in Jesus. RCB received support for the work from an appeal set up through CMS which raised £47,000 to rebuild homes. We're working alongside people who might have um, barriers to employment and um, training them up to roast coffee or to be a barista in the hope that they can find other employment or employment with us perhaps in the long run as well. We do, we do things with coffee and because a lot of the guys we support them, support them are recovering from, from addiction so Ribena just doesn't cut it. Another module that was really significant for me was um, the one Johnny Baker taught on, on worship and out of that came um, some liturgy that I wrote, a coffee liturgy um, and actually we now use that um, in our context. So basically sacred been is, is, it creates a safe space where, where people, do, people are welcomed into that, um, into that space. So this is God's space. This is, um, this is a sacred space, a sacred place. That's why we call it Sacred Bean. But this is a place where um, just as the, um, the shepherds are welcomed into the stable, into that most holy of intimate places with God being born, so, so we invite people into that sacred space where, we, where God can be reborn in people's lives. So a big part of what we do, I think, is giving people hope, um, certainly a, a hope for a better future. Dawn breaks, the baby awakes, hope, hope has come. come. Up close and personal. Wonderful stories there of lives being changed all around the world through encounters with Jesus. Hope up close and personal. One of my uh, favourite hobbies, chiming with many words from tonight, is wood chopping. And I have one of my cut logs here, I think you can see it. If you came to our house and saw the amount of wood, either in the baskets in some of the rooms, in the wood store I made with two of my children in lockdown one, or in the various other places around the front and back of the house, you would think that we had at least one indoor burning wood stone. But that actually isn't the case. But this first story of a carpenter's son who would have worked with many types of wood being born into a wooden manger in a dirty stable, which we remember every year, is the story that burns at the heart of the Christian faith. God with us, our Emmanuel, whether we have our own fires or not. At the end of uh, this year, I saw a quiz and it was advertised with the line, where has there, has there been any good news? This year has also been dubbed the year when everything changed. In some ways, both of those titles have already been claimed over 2000 years ago in a little town called Bethlehem. Good news entered our dark world and everything changed. God drew closer than he had ever done before. And other headlines ringing around newspapers this autumn have included Christmas is saved, written prior to the very sad but inevitable news of Christmas bu bubbles being burst for many in the past couple of days. But the truth, at the heart of the Christmas story is a saviour who not only saves Christmas, but who saves the world. Before I continue, I need to offer a fictional disclaimer as I want to allude to a storyline from The Crown being shown on Netflix. Currently they're on series four, but um, we are actually watching series three at the moment and we are back in 1969. Now, whether this is fact or fiction, it points to me to the very heart of this Christmas message for us all, because this particular scene, it depicts Prince Philip as totally absorbed and transfixed in the Apollo 11 space mission and subsequent landing on the moon. He is portrayed as deeply searching for the meaning of life within it and looking for something beyond what he can see and thinks it's in this event that is happening. And then when he met the astronauts at Buckingham Palace, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins, the American astronauts who had recently made history by landing on the moon, both of those events obviously did happen. 
he was shown to be desperately disappointing. Uh, that although they did something remarkable, it still left him lacking deep inside. He didn't get the answers that he was seeking. And he, like many others of us do, we perhaps look for meaning in created things in a galaxy far, far away. But the truth, not fiction, is that the creator of the moon, the stars, the sun and everything else isn't aloof to this world, but came right into the heart of it to give us all meaning, belonging, hope and a future. God didn't self-isolate himself from the world, but came up close and personal, scorned the riches of heaven and even the riches of earthly palaces to be born among us in human flesh and beckons us to come to him just as we are, to meet him unmasked, no pretense, just humbled and willing, not with a sign that says in full, but a heart open with a vacancy sign. There was no social distancing when Jesus was born, he beckoned those who the world ostracised to come close and receive everything he has to offer. We've heard many stories of that tonight through the readings, but also in our video a moment ago. He offers peace in a troubled world, everlasting life in God's lavish kingdom and love beyond imagining. Wonderful riches on offer to all who seek and find him. And of course, he still offers that to us today, all those who draw close even those of us with lives perhaps more sinful than a dirty stable. And God says simply, let me do my work, cleaning you from the inside out. So we don't need to travel to the moon and back to try and find him. He traveled further than that to find us. And when all our Christmas trees and temporary lights have gone, the world's true light will still be with us. The one who was born in a humble wooden manger was also the one who hung upon a gruesome wooden cross so that we may know the forgiveness and love of God again. The same one who left the jeweled crown of heaven to wear a crown of thorns for us, meeting us in our darkness, difficulties and despair even now, waiting patiently for us to return to his generous heart of love, where like stars we will be crowned in his sight. And so for us, in many ways, we are facing a bleak midwinter, but in the words of the same carol, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can I give him, give my heart. And so may each of us in increasing measure, or even for the very first time, Give our hearts continually to the Saviour of the world. O oh, come, let us adore him, receiving his hope, and whatever we face in this life, allowing Jesus in. And may we and countless others know in increasing measure that God is truly with us, up close and personal. And may we hear of many more stories of hope found in Jesus in 2021. Amen. And so as we respond each in our hearts, if you'd like to respond with uh, the responses in bold, then please join in as we do. So like Mary, who said yes to carrying God's hope in Jesus into the world in order to give us life, may we say yes to Jesus coming back. Like Joseph, who defying human reason, chose to hope in love and to stand by Mary. May we May be we generous. generous with the love we share with friend and stranger. and stranger. Like the shepherds on the hill who with a shiver down their spine gained hope because God chose to meet them first. May, May we hear the angelic you. song of heaven calling us to come home. Like the Magi who travelled far in the hope of paying tribute to a baby king bigger than them all. May, May we, we be searching our until our restless hearts, hearts find, find their hope fulfilled in you, in you, eternal king. Hope of all ages, 
bringer of love and mercy, healer of the outcast and the stranger, near to those who draw near to you, to you we cry. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. So like Mary, be blessed with hope in your waiting. Like Joseph, be blessed with hope in your loving. Like the shepherds, be blessed with hope in your hardship and pain. Like the Magi, be blessed with hope for your seeking and finding. Be blessed in the name of hope, the King who comes close and is alive with us today. It is Christmas. Hope has come. Up close and personal. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and pray for this Christmas and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you everybody thank you for your contributions whether you read or sung or the technical recorded music whatever you did thank you so much uh, good night god bless happy christmas and a peaceful and safe new year